belt pack zero version two three one. Oh, yeah, we got speed. I'm so sorry. No. Ten minutes cast. My name is Jade McCarroll. I am the assistant stage manager. This is good. Accepted. You have all the weapons. I sort of do. Because ah, it's swords. I'm Colleen Nielsen. My role in this production is stage manager. Hi. We're oh inconspicuous. What's happening? It's all normal. Okay. <laughs> We're very inconspicuous. Backstage in my own words. Oh, Mike's, 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 oh, Mike's, 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 Controlled chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Controlled chaos is the best way to describe it. I am the A2 for South Addresser. Spot one. The headdresser. The stagehand. I'm the second spot up. The light board operator, which is this beautiful thing next to me. I would describe running a show like, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but you just like do it, you know? And then you're done, and then you have this sense of, you know, finality, like it's over, except this is just a race that you do multiple times a week, sometimes even multiple times a day. Uh, <laughs> Show day! The stage management arrives an hour and a half to two hours before the show starts. The crew arrives an hour and a half before, and the cast usually arrives an hour to a half hour, depending on the show. They'll get into their microphone. We find like where their natural part is, where it splits from going this way to going that way. You find that part and you create an artificial part by moving all of their hair to the other side of the face. And then you take these wire clips, uh, you clip it onto their hair where the part starts. Then you thread the mic through the back of their hair or to have them split it if it's longer. Do a clip on the back, tape it onto their forehead, which doesn't normally go well because the actors are sweating a lot. Do mic tape on the back and then they're golden. And then their costume. Yeah. Cat. Yeah. Shit. I will make sure they're all in the correct costume. They all have their costume pieces. Yeah. Bandana. Shit. Really... Especially the small pieces that get lost really easily. The show's in the bag. It's not gonna not be in the bag when I look in the bag. When I look in the bag, it's gonna be in the bag. And I'm gonna be like, hell yeah, I put this in the bag. Because Lanny told me that I put this in the bag. Has it ever not been in there? Yes. yes. We all just have a pre-show checklist of something that we do before every show. Turning on my spotlight, my stand light, and my target to track people on stage. I'll turn the light board on. I set up a channel check where I go through every single singular light to make sure there isn't anything wrong with it because maybe there could be a bulb out or sometimes there's like lines within the light. And then me and the stage manager calling, we will do a blackout check. You want to make sure that there isn't anything that's weirdly on to make sure that it's actually a blackout. All right, let's go to Q1, please, and house up. The sound is perfect. I go out onto the stage and reset all of our set pieces for the top of the show. So like I'll move banners into the wings or I'll change the panels on the Velcro booth things. Basically just make sure that everything is set for where we need it for the top of act one. Places, top of the show everyone, places. And we have places. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and start. House to half, go. So there's two elements of stage management. There's me here in this booth as stage manager who's calling the show. And by call that show, it's like calling out light cues for our light board operator, calling sound cues for our soundboard operator. And getting that all set into what's called the call book. And the call book is sort of, if I were to die, somebody could come in, read the book and be able to call the show. So light cues in my book will usually be labeled with an L, sound cues with an S, transitions with a T. One of my favorite parts of calling from a score is watching the music director because each one has a very distinct way they call what's called a button of a song it's a very last sort of punchy note as a stage manager you get to be like this is oh it's happening and if i call it right as his head hits this tilt then i'm calling it perfectly flight 137 and spots fading out those are always kind of fun finding those nuances go it's probably not what you think it means uh being a lightboard operator the lighting designer hannah already designed all of the cues that i have to initiate during the show you press the go button to cue the different light formations 
A spot operator basically has a really big flashlight and they make sure the people are bright. This machine is the really big flashlight that we use. You can make the light smaller, bigger, change the color, and you basically just move it around to make sure that specific people that weren't lit by the actual lighting, you can actually see them because that's a really big thing in acting. I know when to turn on my spot when stage manager gives me a cue that is usually bot one, spotting blah 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 blah, stand by, and then they will say go. As assistant stage manager, I'll connect with Mikes and Colleen and all of the things. As stage crew, it's our job to learn what pieces need to come on and off the stage and kind of the, the behind the scenes choreography that needs to happen in order to make it look pretty on stage. The DOA transition. Maddie and I have everything prepped backstage with all of the pieces that come on. So the first thing I do is I close that traveler, take the bus piece off. Maddie then brings the elevator piece over and I move the blue blocks into their standard position. I make the other elevator match it. And then she sets up Herman in the chair while I am putting the plant. She adds the sign. And by the time we've done all of that, it's about time to fly. We're getting faster at it though. So like we're no longer in like, ah, mode freight. Then I go back to the traveler and I wait for Colleen's geo and I open the traveler, duck behind that elevator, push the whole thing forward to hit its glowing spike marks. I get another geo from Colleen and I put my back foot on the elevator and hold both bars so that I can push it open on the ding. And then we keep going. I grab both pieces of it and pull them together. Maddie and I scooch the whole thing center stage and then we wait. As a dresser, I mostly work with quick changes. Let's prep Medusa. We're transitioning to Medusa. So we have to take the wings off. We have to take their teacher outfit off. Medusa hair and we have to put her dress on properly. We have it scheduled out where which quick changes happen and when. The fastest quick change we have in the show is going to be the very first one where I have to put wings on one of the actors. She comes up for about a line and a half. Okay, so the hold that I use to do it is this with the thumb so that it can easily stretch around her. And then I always have to make sure the cords are, aren't caught in the wings and I put them on my pinkies. So essentially what I do is I'm standing in the wings like this and she'll come and we'll go left, right. And then I drop them cause they're on her. And I drop my hands down to her hands where we pass the strings. And that is how the quick change works. And that's it. Minotaur transition for me personally is actually a series of transitions. I kind of do one after another. So I start and I hand Sally's bag to her. River will be on stage and then he'll come off and he will come directly to me where I have his black shirt ready to put over. And I immediately go and I pick up the minotaurs and then I have a dresser who holds the arm of that huge minotaur so that the actor can slip in. And it's basically like a, like a hiking backpack. And he does one arm into the shoulder pack and he does another arm into the shoulder back. Then he has a buckle that goes right here, and then he has one around his hips as well that goes here. I say, okay, do you have top? And he looks and confirms that he has his top buckle, and I say, do you have bottom? And he confirms he has his bottom buckle. By that point, I slowly release the weight, and then I have a dresser, because he's tall, reach up inside of the head, and there are two flashlights on the inside that make each of those eyes glow. He says once it's on him that it's pretty light, which maybe I could get because backpack formation, but moving that thing around, I think it's a heavy. So I don't know, he might just be being a man. So we get him into that. And then I run to the other side of the stage and I do a Percy sword transition while he's fighting the Minotaur. Percy, you know, sticks his hand out, drops a pen and I put a sword in. Once that's done, I move back around and then I grab the, the bars again. And I say, okay, and he waits for my okay before unbuckling. Then he unbuckles. And I set it down and that one's a pretty fast one because I almost immediately get my standby for the fly. And then the dressers like make sure that it's balanced and turn the eyes off while I am then pulling the fly. Okay, so we start off. And we begin, somebody has an idea, a concept. <laughs> They're like, we're gonna do a show. Usually it would be like kids stage village theater decides the show. 
And then it goes to the production manager. And then it is this job to gather a team of people who can create this. So he gathered separately. He gathered me and Colleen and Brad and the choreographers and the set designers and the props. Then we usually start with a preliminary design meeting. Preliminary design meeting is when the director and all of the creative team, which are the designers, and then uh, the stage management team all meet together and be like, okay, what are we doing? How are we going to do this? Welcome to show. And that is when the process kind of begins. From there, it's just a series of production meetings where they start with general concepts of like, um, what do we want the show to feel like? For this particular show, Brad said a lot of, I want it to feel like a comic book. So then all the designers, props designers, set costume, they all walk away and they say, okay, how can I build costumes and set pieces and props to make it look like a comic book? And then they come back and they say, here's my initial idea. And then the whole team talks about it and Brad's looking at it and talking about it. And then they take it back and they do that a few times until they have their final designs and everyone agrees and they say, okay, this is what the show's gonna look like. Right about that point is usually when auditions take place and that's also when the build starts to begin. So the physical costumes are being sewn together. The wood is being cut, or in this case, the metal, or the set piece is being welded. I'm usually called in about a week before rehearsals start. Stage management team will come in. We will prep all the paperwork. What that means is we're getting all of the scripts put together for the cast and crew. We're getting breakdowns and calendars set we're making sure contact lists are set up we're checking for allergies we're doing all of the normal housekeeping to make sure that we're on track to start rehearsal when the cast is invited to join then first day of rehearsal through first day of tech stage management is in there we're collecting data for exits and entrances and costume changes props how they're being used how the set's being used specific actions, specific locations for lights, all goes into like a master binder of information that then gets disseminated out into run lists or information lists for designers, which then leads us into tech. Which is when we start to add in all the things they've been building on this strand with the props and the costumes and the sets and what they've been building in their bodies and they're practicing and you put them all together and then <laughs> we have tech week. Okay. Usually first day. You're ready in about an hour because you do a big mic check on All the right. stage. Can I get your loudest line? And then we just start top of show, scene by scene. We will stop for scene changes. We'll stop for costume changes. We have what's called a hold. Which is where you just stop the show entirely. Just slightly adjust a set piece and put a spike mark down with just a piece of tape that says exactly where it's supposed to go. Just so that a light hits a piece just perfectly or just so that the dancers can kick their foot up at exactly the right height and not be covering a different set piece. So it's just very detail oriented, but in everything. The stage management team separates into their separate world. The ASM will head backstage and they'll work with the crew for making sure all the set changes and the costume changes go well. Whereas I will move up into the house and we'll start working with the sound and the lighting designers and the directors to really clean up and make the looks of what the show is supposed to look like and how to call that show. It's kind of just a, okay, if we're gonna do this thing and we're gonna have it look good on stage and if we're gonna have it look consistent so that it's the same show every time, what are all the little puzzle pieces that need to go together for that to happen? Do you want to physically open it or do you want her to? What seems more character accurate? I don't know why a person would just walk up to another person's animal and be like, hey. <laughs> And so Tech Week is really just, it's puzzling it all together. Uh, so all the rolling blocks come off to my side. Yeah, it's just a long process. We do six days of rehearsal. We do eight hour, 10 hour days sometimes. We're working a lot today, because uh, you know, it's loopy time. Uh, <laughs> I'm very tired. Personally, I love Tech Week. Dang it, you got the aid that I wanted. It really is the epitome of everything we've done so far. And all the chaos that happens, I usually enjoy facing up like, okay, what can we do? <laughs> a show needs tech because you could not run it without them. You need to have people that come in and build the set and make sure that the set functions. Or if you want to have props and you need people that can come in and design the props and make sure that they work and lets the actors know like when to use them and can manage them or have people do the transitions while on stage. If you want to have lighting for a show, then you need to have people that design the lighting and run the lighting. It's just kind of necessary to help transform it from people talking on stage to like 
a production. I am an actor first. I've never done backstage before. This is my first time taking any show. I'm typically on stage acting. Honestly, in actor mode. I was really used to tech just being a whole lot of sitting around and waiting, but now I actually know what's happening in the booth. People don't realize how chaotic it is backstage because there's typically a whole lot happening all at once. It's like there's a whole other show going on. Every actor should try being behind the scenes at least once. I don't really think that actors realize that that's going on backstage. Can you guys see the ducks? Uh, yes, there is. Ducks? 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 The advice I give to young stage managers is basically there are two things that make a good stage manager. Like anything, anyone can be it, anyone can jump into this role, but all the stage managers I've worked with who are really good at what they do, first is that they are people. People. They are kind and they are generous and they're able to just work well with people. And second, that they are organized and that they are logical thinking. If you have the organization without the people skills, you're just terrible to work with and nobody really listens to you. And the people skills without the organization just makes it rather incompetent. You're the controller of chaos in terms of stage management. So yeah, you have to be able to talk to everybody about everything. I love backstage because I do a lot, but I'm really just doing very small things that are helping people out in a very small way and I just do them over and over and over again and for me that has a certain level of satisfaction of like you're gonna create this great art piece yeah I'm gonna hand you a bag when you ask me to I'm gonna hand it to you every night without fail so you never have to find it by yourself and all of the tasks that go into that Flying set pieces, props, costumes, mics, all of those things are just little tasks to help a great picture, and I love that about Backstage. No, I'm just kidding. I love all of the actors. I love most of the actors. I love some of the actors. Some of them That's are... going on a documentary! <laughs> Literally every I tolerate actor like four of them. <laughs> Just those, guess. Just guess which one. Yeah, you have to. It's and if you have to guess, it's probably not you.